Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. In our video today, we'll be talking about the process of receiving bunkers on board a merchant vessel and how these bunkers are further transferred and stored into dedicated tanks and then later on segregated and used for the running of propulsion and auxiliary machinery. Please keep in mind that when we talk about bunkering in this video, we'll be referring to the traditional or the normal fuels like the VLSFO, HSFO and the LSMG or the diesel oil and as such we'll not be right now talking about fuels such as LNG etc because they need extra special attention and other equipments which would be later on explained in a different video. So let us start. As we know that for the running of vessels it is important to have adequate storage of fuel on board and this fuel should be segregated on the basis of grades and utility. The segregation depends on the total volume required to safely propel the vessel from one point to another also as per the regulations that prevail in the areas where the vessel is bound to sail. So on board a ship we have bunker lines that are segregated keeping this storage and the segregation of fuel in mind and are aligned in a way that we can safely receive oil from shore barge or any other facilities then use it now let us see how this process works so first of all on the open deck or on the exposed areas let's say if we are talking about bulk carriers and tankers then on the open deck and vessels such as container vessels or row rows etc on an intermediate bunker deck you would be having port and starboard bunker receiving connections that is the fixed flange connections and the pipelines originating from it would be available on both port and starboard side so that doesn't matter which side your vessel is alongside or which side the barge is aligned the vessel will be able to receive bunkers on both the sides you will be having standard flange connections to connect the hoses that are received from the shore or the barge and a valve after it immediately to isolate or segregate this particular connection so let us say for example if we are receiving bunker from the starboard connection then we can isolate the port opening by closing these walls and locking them and vice versa. Also you see that over here there are drain cocks or sampling cocks also and these are utilized to initially first of all purge, vent and drain the line and later on also to connect the universally applicable sampling bags or the containers or the cubitainers that we have and draw samples adequately for testing marpole, vessel storage and other purposes. In addition to this, we also have the storage facility and the usage tanks. So per se, the bunker tanks segregated and structurally integrated on the vessel for the storage of large quantity of bunkers. Similarly, the storage tanks which might be little smaller in size but helpful in storing still a significant bulk quantity of fuel. The settling and the service tank again segregated on the basis of the grade and the quality of fuel that we are using. In the diagram, we refer the fuel as LSFO but what we essentially mean is the heavier fuel and by the gas oil we mean the lighter fuel and since we are already aware about the environmental regulations segregating them and the properties segregating them so it is much easier to understand. Now let us imagine that my vessel is about to receive bunkers. So first I receive heavy oil bunker let's say. So the hose from the barge or the shore supply will come and connect to either of the flanges on the port or starboard side and accordingly I will line up the first wall. From there my oil moves on to the line and goes at a point where it has to go further into one of the tanks that is available on board. So what I will do is I will line up my valve over here which is basically the first filling valve. And then after lining this valve up, my bunker that is the fuel oil flow will then be standby over here. So what I need to do is I need to isolate the direct filling walls on the settling tanks to make sure that the oil does not go over here because the quantity of the oil that you can receive within a settling tank on a moderate size on a small size vessel such as bulk carrier etc is relatively small. So it would not be of much use and it would fill very easily and very fast. So then. After lining up the first filling wall, you then want your bunker to proceed forward and go into the bunker tank by following this trajectory. From here, we would again be making sure that the transfer pump is isolated and so is the interconnection. So that is why we have shown the interconnection being blank and here is the wall that we want to be closed connecting the transfer line to the bunker line. So then this wall also remains closed. Meaning the oil now has only one access to flow along this line and go and await on the bunker tank filling line. 
Now, depending upon the orientation of which tank you have to dedicatedly fill, you will be having a combination of walls that you can line up over here. So let's say you want your bunker to go into a particular dedicated tank such as one port, one starboard, two port, two starboard or whatever. You will be having the first filling wall and also an auto valve over here that is basically meant for regulation of pressure and would be unidirectional and spring loaded. In most of the cases on the latest vessels, you will be having auto automatic walls as well in addition to manual walls and these automatic walls would be either hydraulically or electronically operated from a remote location such as the master control room or the engine control room etc or even on some of the vessels you will be having dedicated bunker control stations so from there you can electronically or hydraulically operate these walls and what it means is that then this oil will flow and go into the dedicated bunker tank after that once you have started receiving the oil in the bunker tank then you can take manual soundings or also rely on the level gauges which are on the remote side or also correlate them with each other. Similarly over here for LSMGO gas oil you can see that there is a dedicated line and even though on some of the vessels you might find the same bunker tank philosophy for LSMGO or gas oil but over here what we have shown is the storage tank philosophy that is we have two storage tanks and once the oil is coming after opening the first filling valve and opening the dedicated tank valve that is the inlet to the tank we can start receiving oil directly onto the storage tank. It can also be seen that there is a line bifurcating from the main filling line on both LSMGO and LSFO side. This line contains a relief valve sort of assembly which is spring loaded and set at a default pressure and why this is because our bunker lines are statically tested at a certain pressure and to avoid over pressurization and then later on any spill of oil within the engine room or externally as well through these lines we have this assembly that would then relieve and take the oil into an overflow tank may it be on the gas oil side or may it be on the heavy oil side or the LSFO side and then make sure that the lines are not over pressurized and there is no overflow happening that is why before every bunker it is very important to keep the overflow tank in an empty state and make sure that the alarms that is the floats for the overflow tank are tested and also for the bunker tanks it is very important to test the alarms prior taking bunker into the dedicated tank to make sure that in case of an emergency the bunker tank would be giving the correct indication and also you will get an instantaneous alarm if there is a chance of rapid filling or any mishap to happen which can lead to an overflow or a spill. Now once the bunker is received and all the lines are set back to normal you can see that there are transfer pumps in the dedicated line available and these transfer pumps can draw suction from the dedicated tanks. So basically for LSMG or gas oil you can draw suctions from any of the storage tank and from there a dedicated suction wall would be available going into the diesel oil transfer pump which would again have a suction and a discharge and after lining up the pump by lining up the main suction from the tank the intermediate suction and the suction and discharge wall for the transfer pump you will again be having a final wall which would be and again these things are mostly dependent on the line diagram that you have on your vessel so what we are explaining over here is pertaining to the line diagram that we have and then later on the oil would directly flow into the line which then further leads into the storage tank and opening the correct storage tank wall would also allow you to transfer between tank to tank directly so let's say if i was to have certain bunker amount or quantity in my storage tank 1 and i want to transfer the oil into storage tank 2 then basically i line up the suction or the outlet valve basically by suction i mean the suction to the pump and by outlet i mean the outlet of the tank so this particular valve and then as i described earlier the lineup and then opening the filling valve of the number 2 storage tank and that is how this intertransfer can take place and similarly later on this oil can also be directly used from the service tank and as we know that the service tank for LSMGO can either have direct lines on most of the vessels or it can also have overflow lines from the storage tank or basically the normal interconnection philosophy within the settling and the service tank that we normally see on heavy oil side can also be present on the gas oil side. Taking the same philosophy of usage of oil onto the heavy oil side that is the basically now what we regard as the LSFO 
will again be drawing suction from the dedicated bunker tank by opening this main suction wall from the bunker line and then the oil would come and wait over here basically at the end of the transfer pump then lining up the suction and discharge for the transfer pump and main discharge wall you will now be having your oil available to be filled in the dedicated settling tank and accordingly you can open whichever settling tank wall that you want to fill the oil inside and then start the transfer pump to make sure that the oil flows from the right bunker tank into the right settling tank it is very important to make sure that the interconnection walls during the transfers are dedicatedly closed and cross checked and also all the interconnections unless extremely essential when there is one pump that has gone bad and you need to dedicatedly use it then only it is line up otherwise all the interconnections are blank and also the lines are marked in different colors in some of the ships you will see red and pink or even yellow and red or brown and yellow combinations depending upon whatever color coding is being followed on that vessel and on that class of vessels. I hope that this entire understanding of the bunkering system and the bunker lines available on board helps you to have a clear idea and if you still have any doubts please feel free to reach out and drop your questions and suggestions in the comment section. Also please make sure to like our videos and subscribe to our channel and share with your colleagues and fellow shipmates. Thank you.